Well, welcome back to Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. I'm so excited. This is the month of May. Yes, it's the month of May. Y'all know I love the month of May and y'all know why. Because May is my birthday month. That's the first thing. I love the month of May because it is my birthday month. It's Mother's Day. It's so many wonderful reasons to celebrate in the month of May. I'm also excited about the month of May because this month we have launched uh, season seven of the Harmonize Your Life podcast. After two full years of this podcast of hosting and facilitating these dynamic, informational, inspirational, motivational uh, conversations. And some of them have been very challenging conversations on self-care, health, wellness, fitness, mental health, nutrition, whatever. It, we have run the gamut on this show and we are not done yet. There's so many, so many avenues and aspects of health and wellness and self-care that we can um, that we can look at and discuss and learn about. And so we're grateful for this opportunity to come right where you are and to bring these conversations to you. I am also excited because if you're viewing this podcast today, it is actually my birthday. If you're viewing it on the day that is that is launching, this particular conversation today is on my birthday, May 16th. And so I'm glad that you're on this journey with me. We have a birthday fitness challenge going on, and we're hoping that you can join on in with us. If you've not started yet, you can get on in there with us before it's over. And then also, uh, I want you to check out My Sister's Keeper Foundation for Women, which is my nonprofit organization. I want you to uh, check out our uh, uh, website at mskfoundation.org. We have our Women of Excellence Scholarship event coming up where we give out scholarships to women and girls going to college, some for the very first time, some returning, some who've had their uh, education interrupted. And we support them with scholarships, financial scholarships that help them complete their uh, secondary and postgraduate education. And so it's so many things happening in the month of May. And I just want you to be a part of my life and the things that I'm doing and the things that the women that I'm connected to are doing. And I believe it will be a blessing in your life. Well, today's conversation is, is going to be uh, just like all the others, just lit, going to be wonderful conversation. I have a wonderful guest in the podcast studio with us this week. And I am so glad that you are in the studio with us. So we'll be right back with another intriguing, informational, inspirational, motivational podcast conversation right after this. Well, let's go. Let's get into this conversation. I'm excited to have one of my spiritual daughters in, in the conversation with us today. She is no stranger to this podcast. If you go back, uh, I want to say 2020, when I first launched, the year that we launched the podcast, she came on in the month of May. And we talked about some, um, some self-care around uh, motherhood. And we're back again because y'all know month May is Mother's Day month. And so I invited her uh, to come back into the conversation with me and let's delve deeper, go deeper into our conversation uh, around self-care, health and wellness, particularly as it relates to mothers. Our topic today is save some for yourself, right. self-care for mothers. And so I just want to introduce our guest to you, and then we're just gonna, you're gonna let you listen in on our conversation. So Nafisha Frost Bailey is a wife, a mom of two boys, and I want to say she's added to her family since she was on here last. Three, uh, um, two boys, three years old and six months old. Mm -hmm. She is a wellness educator and reaches a variety of people, but specializes in women. Uh, in helping women to reach the highest version of themselves. I love that. 
reach the highest version of themselves through movement, nutrition, and stress management. All of these things are so important to self-care. She um, has been in the school system for 10 years. She's an um, a, um, educator in the school system in, um, is it Richmond County, right? Is it Richmond mm-hmm. County, Georgia, mm-hmm. in Augusta, Georgia, yeah. where she has um, she has been teaching there for a number of years. She's been a, um, a wellness, in the wellness profession for 14 years. Mm-hmm. And she's recently added to her training and her certifications, postpartum support and certified yoga support. Mm-hmm. So will you help me welcome to the Harmonize Your Life podcast again, um, our sister and our friend, Nafisha Frost Bailey. Welcome, Nafisha. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. The health dealer. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Right. <laughs> she goes by the health dealer, y'all, and I'll tell y'all how y'all can connect with her uh, in the work that she that she's doing. Nafisha, thank you again for, for gracing us with your presence on thank you the Harmonize Your Life podcast. You know how much I admire you and how proud of you I am. You and Juwan, your husband, uh, are both um, uh, educators and Mm -hmm. um, working in the school system and doing a lot with physical health Mm -hmm. education. And Mm -hmm. so we appreciate the work that you are doing with our children and our community. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to come into the studio today. I know your family has grown. Yes, Lord. (laughs) You got an Three month old baby. Six months. Six months. Six months. Mm-hmm. Six month. I'm sorry. Six months and three year old. That's mm-hmm. right. Three years old and six months. And God knows I know the feeling. Been there, done that, got the t shirt, <laughs> all of that, right? Oh, I know yeah. what it's like to have three children under the age of three yeah. at the same time, right? Mm-hmm. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to have a single stroller and a double stroller <laughs> going through the airport, right? I know what it's like doing homework and uh, and uh, writing papers, me writing <laughs> papers while I'm working on my master's degree and my doctorate with Barney and Dora the Explorer yeah. on the television and Blue's Clues. That was, that's the stuff that was out when my kids were younger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so talk to us, um, share with us a little bit of your journey, uh, a little bit of your story for those who've not heard it before, not didn't hear you the first time you were on the podcast, just kind of rewind the tape a little bit and then fast forward to where you are today. Share with us because I see you've added some things um, mm-hmm. to your belt, like postpartum um, mm-hmm. support and uh-huh. yoga. And mm-hmm. I want to know how all of that came about. So talk to us about your journey uh, with self-care, health and wellness. So as it pertains to um, having young children. When I first had Ali, I had him uh, when I was 30. Uh, yeah, when I was 30. I had him when I was 30. And, you know, of course, super new mom and wanted to do all the things right and by myself and nobody else could do it. And um, you couldn't really tell me anything until I got drugged, drugged down. <laughs> and I didn't have no choice but to let somebody help me. And um, I went through a period of time. I don't. I know I had like the postpartum blues, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say it was postpartum depression. But I did go through a period of time where I lost myself, and I'm trying to figure out how to um, find myself again, find a new self while cultivating this new family, um, being the absolute best mother that I can be. And I thought that it was selfish of me to carve out time for myself if I'm trying to um, do well in this new job, this new Mm -hmm. job title, which is being mom and really wife, because Juwan and I conceived a year after we got married. So we were still trying to figure out, you know, our thing as well. And then Ali was on the way. So the next time um, when Zen came along, I knew that I wanted to do things a lot differently. Mm -hmm. I well, with Ali, I had an epidural, um, mm-hmm. and, and every, the pregnancy was went well. The, you know, labor and delivery was fine, but I knew this, and but I didn't like that I couldn't move through labor um, mm-hmm. because I had an epidural. Um, with Zim, I knew I wanted to be active through labor, and I knew I was going to need the support of a doula. So I hired a doula okay. this, um, this time around, um, and I, you know, and I accomplished the goal of having no medicine um, with Zim. Well, and you're a bad girl, honey, because I, <laughs> I I I needed all the medicine and I took it. <laughs> and it was it was a very different experience. I had to do a lot of mental 
um, training and physical, but more so mental and making sure I, I carved out time for that to be able to um, be in sync with my body or become one with my body to to allow it to do what it knows how to do. Um, okay. anyway. um, so, but I knew I wanted to heal differently this go. I wanted the labor and delivery to go differently. I know I wanted to heal differently this go around. So for my birthday, I was, I think, right at eight months pregnant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or this is September. He's, no, he was born in October. I, um, I had a wellness birthday baby shower sprinkle type part you know I combined the two um and we uh-huh. didn't need as many things because Ali is only three and I kept all his stuff so um I knew that I wanted to do things differently so for my birthday I had um I created a document it's called sustainable sustainable well um sustainable self-care plan and um, another document for morning and evening routine because I what I found out with Ali is I have to have a morning routine babies are so unpredictable that I needed some type of routine I needed something that I can hang on to something I know that's consistent that's mm-hmm. stable and it kind of gets me um mentally prepared for whatever the day brings so I created a doc uh, two documents and I had everybody fill it out at the party and it was interesting to hear people's things um and I'll talk more about the, the self-care plan which has been one of my saving graces during this time because um I wanted to figure what that figure out what that looks like ahead of time because I knew while I was going through the newborn phase I Mm -hmm. wouldn't have enough mental clarity in order to step back and fear or enough time I was sleep deprived and all the I wouldn't wouldn't have enough mental clarity to to step back and think okay what do I need what do I like what do I like because when you're in the hamster wheel you can't you can't quite (laughs) you know it's hard for you to get there so I wanted to already have something I shared it with my family my friends so they they can hold me accountable but it's basically a um you kind of sit down and brainstorm but you come up with things that you can do on a daily basis and make it mm-hmm. a point to do something off that list on a daily basis to pour back into yourself okay and I figured out that pouring back into myself is what i needed to do in order to be the best um mom wife person um that i can absolutely be so that's kind of how i did things differently and I tried to, like, I have the postpartum survival kit and I, like, that was birthed out of necessity because I know that I, that's what I needed in order to um, make sure I was pouring back into myself because everybody focuses on baby um, and not a lot of focus is on the mom. And in order for the mom to be emotionally regulated, um, to be a great mom, to be a great, a good person she's going to have to stay connected with self and in order to stay connected with self you got to spend time with self and be intentional um about what you do during that time um so yes that's wow i mean you've said so much that we can unpack and say i want to unpack a little bit of of things that you said i heard i heard you you saying that you had to get become one with your body Uh and your mind as you were preparing for the birth of -hmm. your second child um you began to prepare before you had the baby mm-hmm. a self-care list of mm-hmm. things that you knew that would pour back into you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um, you're not trying to do all those things on that list every day, but I heard you say, just take one thing mm-hmm. off that list that you can do for yourself that will pour back into you. Mm-hmm. And then I heard you say, um, you, you, you also said something about... Um, making sure you know what you want. Because yeah. see, what I have come to discover is that a lot of women don't even know what pours back into them. Oh, mm-hmm. you said in order to take care of yourself, you got to spend time with yourself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so many women struggle with spending time with themselves, whether they're newly married or been married a long time, whether they're single, some single women, mm-hmm. you know, Ch- women with children, women without children. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. It just seems mm-hmm. that women, we struggle with spending time with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? I think because there's a lot of, we have a lot of access to distraction. And I know for me, my mom teases me sometimes about, like, you I'll go home. There. We have a lot of access to distraction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I know my mom teases me sometimes because I'll go a whole day and won't turn the TV on. She's like, you just sitting here and, and quiet. And, so, and I'm just like, I, I, I like to sit with myself and think 
and feel. Um, and I think a lot of people are afraid to sit with their thoughts and sit with their feelings. It's more, I want to avoid or keep myself busy so that I don't, so because I don't know how to process, you know, traumas or things that have happened or things that I'm afraid of or things that I'm good at or my weak spots. Um, and they're afraid to, to look at those things. And yeah. um, the more you look at, process, figure out how can I make it better? Is this something I want to be concerned about? Will this be beneficial to me? The more you kind of get to know what you need, who you are and what you need and, you know, things that the resources you'll need to pull from to be able to, to yeah. put back into, you know, but if you don't spend time with yourself, like you're not going to begin to think about those things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, um, Nafisha, one of the one of the things that I when you was talking about sitting in the house by yourself without mm -hmm. television, I can go days, weeks, months, literally without mm -hmm. turning on television. I don't, I don't, I don't need the stimuli. Um, but when we're distracted by outside stimuli or whatever, and sometimes I find that sometimes it's not even the outside stuff; it's the internal stuff that we're distracted by. Yeah. our own thoughts, mm -hmm. our own emotions, negative thoughts, experiences that we continue to play back over and over and over again in our mind. Have you ever, have you experienced that? Because like for me, I'm not, I don't have to have the television on or mm -hmm. radio on, but sometimes where I get distracted is the work, you know, getting something done, getting um, the work done, the uh -huh. emails, the, um, I get distracted by um, productivity. Yeah, productivity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so have, yeah. have you had that struggle? Yes, I have. And I uh, and I talked to my last session with my doula. Um, I was explaining to her, like, you know, I need my morning routine. I need this. And, and I got it. She was like, you know, sleep when the baby sleeps because sleep is super important. I didn't realize how important sleep was until the yeah. second baby as well. Like, yeah, yeah. super important. Like. I know everybody say get sleep, but you have to get sleep in order to function. Like it's mm -hmm. this is important. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, she was saying, so why do you feel like you have to be productive? Like what in you makes you feel like if you're not productive, you're not valuable. And oh, I was that's like, it. I mean, what is it in us that makes us feel like if we're not productive, mm -hmm. we're not validated? And what does productivity look like? She was like, well, you don't feel like if you accomplished during this newborn phase, if you've accomplished eight hours of sleep, that's not that's not pro productive to you because that's what your body needs. Your body doesn't need for you to wash the dishes, for you to clean up, for you to vacuum, for you to, you know. So why, why do you look at productivity as um, these outside things always, you know, because sometimes it is, but we don't look at rest as productivity or journaling as productivity or breath work or meditation. That's not productive. Productive is, okay, what I write on my to-do list? Check. Okay. Check. Got it done. Check. Send that email. Made that phone call. Um, so I had to really take a look at like, okay, so if I'm not productive, like, by, I, by the world standards. Of by the world, yes. yes. I, so it sounds like to me that it's not so much productivity that we need to, to change our mind about. We need to expand our definition of productivity. Mm -hmm. So your yeah. doula was expanding your definition of productivity when she mm -hmm. said um, sleep is, is productive. It's productive. If we're doing breath work, when we're deep mm -hmm. breathing, that's productive. If we're doing yoga, that's productive. You know, I just we just finished a four-week uh, deep breathing session through the self-care network that, that I run. And I'm gonna tell you, I I invited the women in the network to come, and some I had several of them say, "Oh, I don't get off in time," and and I made it like at eight o'clock at night mm -hmm. so that everybody can get all their work done and all that. Then come in for thirty minutes and let's do practice deep breathing just for thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. And you would have thought I was putting a gun to women's head just yep. to get them to come into on Zoom, yeah, just to have thirty minutes of deep breathing. We don't see that as productive. We don't, we don't yeah. see that as something that we need. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, 
she shift she helped help me to shift my perspective about what productivity looks like because I am a checklist person. So I feel good when I can check off those things. But when I'm burnt out, then it's, you know, I have mixed feelings about, okay, oh, now I got to rest. I can't do nothing. I can't, you know, so I had to shift what that looks like for me in this season with a newborn, a three-year-old, um, and of course, you know, a husband. So yeah, that was, that was in really your cool. career. In my career, not yeah. Just, not just, you know, your family, but yeah. the things that you're doing. You're a school teacher, full-time mm -hmm. mm -hmm. school teacher. You have your own business, yep. the health dealer. Yep. Um, you're doing classes, yoga, and mm -hmm. so you're do you're pretty pretty active mm -hmm. outside of being a mother and a wife. And a wife. Yeah, for sure. Wow, yep. that that that's that's something. So, yep. talk to us about some of your um when you when you hear the term "save some for yourself." Mm -hmm. What does that mean for you when you hear that? Save some for yourself. So I'm I'm gonna be honest. Initially. It almost sounds selfish. Ah, uh. um, almost like don't, uh -uh, don't, you know. And <laughs> well, I, I'll say what I what I would have thought before. Okay, it, it sounds, but now I'm I know that I have to save. I feel like it's selfish not to save some for yourself because you shortchange yourself and everybody else if you don't. Yes, yes, that's you it. Every yourself and everybody else if you don't if you don't save anything for yourself. So to me, what that looks like is um really creating boundaries for my for myself in my immediate family. So sometimes I have to explain to Ali, okay, mama's gonna go in this room, I'm gonna close the door, we have everything you need, you know, ask your daddy for you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um but mommy, can I come? And I'm like, no, mommy needs a break right now. And if and I feel bad in the moment, but I know that I, I have to create that boundary. And sometimes it sounds, it may sound a little, man, I don't know. I, I almost feel bad for saying, but sometimes they can't have ac all access to me all the time. Everybody yeah. can't have access to me all the time, no matter how much I love them or yes, whatever. Like I have to. I have to cut it off, you know, make sure the necessities are met, but like at some point I have to cut off the access so that I can save some for myself. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I mean that, it, you know, one of the term, one of the things I say about self-care, one of the things I've phrases that I've coined about self-care is self-care is a gift to yourself and everybody else in your life. Yeah. Everybody else that you love, that you love or you care for or whatever, because if I don't take care of me, then I'm no good to my family. I'm no good. Because so if you're tired and you're frustrated and you've not gotten enough sleep and you've not done the things that refresh you, then when Ali comes and says, mommy, can I come? Then you may find yourself being short with him, snappy mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we've, we've known people that really, that hurt children mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they didn't do the work on right. them yep. that was necessary to be the best healthy person that they could be in raising their children and not just necessarily with what we what they physically have done to children but sometimes the words that come out of our mouth mm -hmm. can harm them or whatever so if I don't take care of me mm -hmm. then I'm really like you said I'm shortchanging me and I'm shortchanging them yep. I'm shortchanging my children my husband my my classroom everybody, everybody. that I am charged to be in relationship with, care for, be in community with. So saving, so you, I heard you say saving something for yourself. So first sounds like boundaries, setting boundaries. Yeah. And boundaries. And I've come to learn that boundaries aren't, it's not a bad word because mm -mm. that's, you know, that's what people feel like, oh, I can't, you know, but it, it's not a bad word and it's okay to set boundaries. I think that, um, even with Juwan, we'll talk at the beginning of the week and, of course, spell out all of the things that have to happen or must happen during the week, but also talk about, okay, so on Wednesday night, I need two hours, either it's in the house okay. or out the house. That way it gives him time to, if I say I need two hours in the house, then I need y'all to go take him to the park, you know, so go, you know, go do something. He has enough time to plan to do so. And then but I have to make sure that I do that for him as well. And the more okay. we show that we want each other to save some 
for ourselves that the more the easier it is to do you know because okay. sometimes we get caught in like okay we're gonna talk about what i want to do what i want to do what i want to do and then joan's like well what about me and then the next time i ask him to you know can you yeah. do this they like, need that as well they need it as yeah. well Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so well, what do you say for the girl that's listening to us, the woman that's listening to us that's not married, doesn't have a partner in the home to mm-hmm. help with taking the children or whatever? What 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 advice would you give her? I I would say routine is schedule is everything. Routine is everything. And with of course kids adults need routine as well kids need routine but if you have your child on a routine because there's a well there's a lot of times i did have the kids by myself during basketball well, you know they kids tend to mess up the routine so um but i but i know that okay so i, I can depend on this time at at this time we do this with 6 45 we start a bath what about seven o'clock mm-hmm. So about this so by eight o'clock regardless of what's going on um he's in the bed like okay. he, you know and okay. i can take the time to exhale or to take a bath or you know doing some certain things that i want to do and even if okay. it's not right at that time you still are creating because that, that's the only way I, I feel like you can carve out time for yourself if you don't have the help in house, you know, that you may need is to mm-hmm. keep the child on a on a routine as best you can and keep your yourself on a routine as best you can mm-hmm. and making mm-hmm. sure that okay, hey, by if we're done with everything, baby, good night. I love you. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, go let into any yeah, because some people just let, you know, they don't have any kind of routine and they just let whatever happens in the day happen. Mm-hmm. And I do, I'm like you, I was very rude. I had routines for myself, for my mm-hmm. children, mm-hmm. Uh, and it did help them to develop some sense of mm-hmm. when well, they, because kids need breaks from us, just like we need breaks yeah. from them. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, but also I, I advocate for, uh, because even as a married woman, I still have other people in my world who could take the who could take the kids, even when my husband yeah. needed a break yeah. or when I needed a break and he has something else going on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important that we have community. That's why yeah. I think yeah. that, that we stay mm-hmm. connected to community, girlfriends, mm-hmm. moms, sisters, yeah. uh, brothers, uncles, whatever, the people we can trust, of course, right. with right. our children. But um, yeah, I think that's so important that we stay connected. The village, you know what I'm saying? That, Agreed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I got girlfriends who, you know, hey, bring that child over here. Or yeah. they tell me, bring that child over here. Mm-hmm. And we give each other those breaks um, that we need. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I think that it's important that we stay connected in community. That That's that's really good. So what are some of the um, other things that you would recommend in terms of um, self-care mm-hmm. practices that you have? engaged in what are some of the practical things that you do to keep yourself so filled up or refreshed so i i definitely refer back to my um, sustainable self-care plan and the reason why i call it sustainable is because it is a literally a list of i I have about a list of 15 things that don't cost money or men can you share what some of those are yeah so going for a walk in the park um taking a taking a bath, lighting candles, listening to soft music, deep breathing, journaling, reading, um, eating a bowl of berries, raspberries, blackberries, and um, blueberries always gives me, you know, an extra little boost that makes me feel good. Um, Eating a fiber-rich meal Mm -hmm. um, when I'm feeling, and that helped me a lot because I mean, I think it has to do with your your chem, your gut and your chemical structure as well when you're eating fiber rich foods, uh-huh. drinking water, um, going on hikes, just spending time in nature, watching the sunrise, watching the sunset, and not like all of these things are they're free. Yeah, like they like these are things that that you can do. You know, you just have to be intentional about doing it and making a point to stretching, stretching, like your bottom, you know. So those things. And you call it a sustainable self care routine mm-hmm, because like you can access it every day. Because uh, we all know that okay, self care. I'm gonna go to the spa, or I'm yeah, gonna go to, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna go to, but you you can't always 
you don't always have access to those things. You yeah. may not have anybody watch your child during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you can't, it doesn't, you know, some, some of those things may depend on other people. And if they're not willing to do it, then, you know, it goes out the window for you too. So your self-care fluctuates based off of other people, whether you got money, um, somebody watch your child. But the reason why it's sustainable um, is because you can access those things at any time, day, night, by yourself, with other people. You know, it makes wow. it makes pouring back into yourself a lot easier. One, because you've already thought about what your things look like mm-hmm. and you've written it down. And most times when we kind of get in a rut, like I said, it's hard to it's hard to think about those things mm-hmm. when you're when you're in a rut. So you don't have mm-hmm. to think about it. It's already written out. You already have it there. You share it with your people. Um, so they can when you when they see you're kind of down or and I'm like, hey, you know, refer back to it. You go outside and watch the sunset, you know, go outside and do some some prayer, some deep breathing or, you know, inner meditation or stretching. And they're there to remind you, hey, you wrote these things down. You asked me to hold you accountable for them. You you know, make it happen because I see that you you haven't poured into yourself in a while. Wow, you know? that's um, good. I love that sustainable self care routine. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow that one. Mm-hmm. I'm borrow that mm-hmm. one. Self-care, yeah. And they, oh. it's, mm-hmm. go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say it's um it's just a matter of intention because I and I know that. Mm. So, and I'm gonna use Juana as an example, but I know <laughs> when I. So say, for instance, I get a break, an hour break on Wednesday. I will spend my time pulling from my self-care plan. I'm like, okay, so this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And by the time I may not have accomplished everything, but I feel reset or refreshed, um, like I can keep going. As opposed to Juwan, sometimes he spends that time being entertained by like TV. And I said, there's nothing wrong with that. It's relaxing to you. But after you finish, you're still drunk. After you finish watching TV, you're still drunk. Like you're not refreshed. You're uh-huh. not. Okay. Okay. You haven't, you haven't pressed reset. So uh-huh. your battery is still low. You've been entertained, but your battery is still low when you get back to us and you're still <laughs> operating off a low battery. Like, you know, you're just, I'm, I'm working with them. So to- it's not just doing things. It's stuff that's going to refill and refresh okay. and renew Correct. us. Correct. Yeah. That's why you have to be intentional about thinking about it, brainstorming, mm-hmm. really getting to know yourself so that you know what refreshes you. Because if not, you'll end up spending the, you know, the small amount of time that you do have, you know, just being entertained or, you know, whatever. But your battery, like I tell Juwan, your battery is still low when you get back to us and you still got, you still got a short fuse, you know? <laughs> Because the battery is, you know, your battery is still low. So we're working on, he's like, I know, I know. I just need to get out of here. You know, <laughs> so we're, we're working on that. But, you know, it's the difference. It's the difference. You need, and yeah. I like to be entertained as well. But I know that if I have a small break, um, if I'm, I, I'm giving that gift of time and intention to myself. Because I know yeah. that when I come back from that, I'll be better than I was going into it. And that's yeah. my goal. I love what you said. I'm giving that gift of time to myself mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. I can come back better than what I than left. What I left. Mm-hmm. That is so good. You've added to your uh, certifications and your um, training mm-hmm. uh, doula support. Mm-hmm. Postpartum support. Mm-hmm. Postpartum, sorry. Postpartum mm-hmm. support mm-hmm. and yoga. Mm-hmm. So what made you do that? In my experience with well, what I what I envisioned my experience, uh, what I wanted my experience to be with Zen and then what kind of took place after um, I, in talking to my doula, I wanted to know, I'm a systems type person. I feel like I I have a quote on my vision board and it says, I, I, I don't want to misquote it, but it says um, a good system is the shortest way, shortest route to where you want to be. Okay. Okay. Uh Um, so I, I value systems a lot and people don't, they're just not things in place for women after they have babies, they have the support. Like you can go to therapy, which is also great. Um, but things like after you have a newborn, make sure you 
you know, still get your eight at like sleep when the baby sleeps until you get your eight hours. Until you get that eight hours, then when you get those eight hours, then you get up and do the things that you need to do. So I wanted to, I, my goal is to create a system that helps moms, uh, postpartum mothers to be able to access parts of themselves that they're not usually able to access on their own with a good system, you know, yeah, right, right. Um, because, to help them develop those systems. Yeah. Because, yeah. because there's, it's just kind of, you just kind of fend for yourself and whatever you can get, you can get whatever you can, but a, like, it's like have, scavenger hunting. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's the difference between making time and finding time. So people say, I was, when I find time, finding mm -hmm. time is like scavenger hunting. So mm -hmm. I'll pick up where I can, mm -hmm. but making time is intentionality. Correct. This is what I need. This is when I need it. Mm -hmm. And this is how I plan to get it. Yep. Yep. And then mm -hmm. it develops your emotional maturity. I found that a lot of people um, are, are, are emotion, emotionally immature and, and, the only way mm. you can, if that's not dealt with, that's passed down to your children, yeah. how you handle yeah. things yeah. Um, and the, in the manner in which you process, do you avoid it and not look at it until it blows up? Do you, are you able yeah. to sit in front? Like, and I knew that that's not what I wanted for myself or my children. So I had to figure out a way to connect to self and um, having those systems in place, especially after you have a baby and your hormones are kind of mm -hmm. everywhere, um, and your life is uh, the the most unpredictable during that time. I would say, um, having the I know I want to create something that have to to help those women create a system, um, and like I said, access parts of themselves that they're not usually able to, and helping them to develop and grow as an individual, even in the midst of that really, really tough time. Okay. Um, because it's nothing, it's nothing in place for women to be able to, to do that. And yeah, uh, I, use I love that. Herbs. Um, mm -hmm. I know, and I saw yeah, Felicia made, made a blend for my, for the, for the party as well. She made like a wellness blend for the party um, as well. But like I use herbs, teas, my journal, my my yeah, yeah, yeah. routine like all of those things are yeah. part of the system of mm -hmm. that help yeah that help you to be a better individual because yeah if not then you know you just kind of shoot them from the hip and then what what are you giving your children what mm -hmm. are you giving your you know your husband in in the meantime mm -hmm. uh, or the people who love you or the people yeah. you love in the meantime you just yeah. kind of shoot from the hip and I didn't yeah. want that I want to be very intentional with who I am, what I want, what I need, and then be able to um, give to those other people. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're helping women with that. Mm -hmm. So are you taking um, clients? Do you, how do women, if they want to tap into your services? I'm going to put on here, Nafisha Frost Bailey is our um, guest for today. And um, she is the health dealer, the health mm -hmm. dealer. Her website is healthdealer.org, healthdealer.org. You can find her on IG at the health dealer underscore, or you can find her on Facebook at Nafisha Frost Bailey. So how do women tap into your services, Nafisha? How, if they want to, after listening to this podcast, connect with you, whether they've had a baby or not, and they uh -huh. just want to develop that. Um, system. So I will be taking on new clients probably starting in August because mm -hmm. um, I do want to finish out the certification and we're going through a transition of moving to Covington. Okay. Oh! Yes. So we'll be transitioning um all summers and I and I don't want to you know put anybody in the mix while while we're doing that because that's that's okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I'll be taking on new clients um in August. After, in August, after the summer mm -hmm. break. After okay. the summer break, yep. And um they can uh, online I post things on my IG all the time, my Facebook, and mm -hmm. I'll have my services and things like that listed on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing a 
launch uh, with me and Meckins or me and my sisters will be doing a launch to kind of a pop-up shop launch at the wellness spot in uh, July. And I'll be doing different um, events with Tramika. I'm doing her momscape event. Mm -hmm. Um, So just an opportunity, different speaking engagements, different opportunities for me to pour into um, individuals. And then I'll, start back up my services in August. Good, good. I'm so, so, so proud of you, the health dealer. You are doing it. You are doing it big too. And I'm real excited to see them babies and how they are growing up and how God is using you and your husband and your sisters in this season. And I know your mother is extremely proud mm-hmm. of her daughters, right? And she, yes, she, she is. is a force to be reckoned with all by herself. Yes. Pray with me, because I can't seem to get her to come on the podcast. Oh, you know, she, she give me all these, Dr. Tony, have you thought about doing this? Mm-hmm. Have you thought about doing mm-hmm. this? I'm like, girl, come on this podcast and let's talk. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I, just, you know, I just talked to you. But anyway, uh, that is Coach Shantae Frost that I'm talking mm-hmm. about. All right. So listen, um, Nafisha, I just want to do a little station identification and then I want you to give us a final word uh, okay. before we sign off here. But for those of you that are listening to us today, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with Dr. Tony Alvarado. I want you to know that you can find this podcast on Apple, on Google, on uh, Spotify. Um, we are we are in, on streaming platforms. We are also on YouTube. You can go to my YouTube channel. And let me say this about my YouTube channel. We are um, we are on our way. Um, we our next goal is to reach 500 subscribers. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go there and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are not too far away from our 500. Uh, person goal, uh, subscriber goal, and we are really, we can use your help in getting there. Um, what, what happens is when you subscribe to this YouTube channel, you ensure that content like what we're talking about on this podcast, information, mo- uh, inspiration, motivate, motivational content on health, wellness, self-care, fitness, um, mental health, all the things that help us to live a harmonious and healthy life. When you subscribe to this podcast, you ensure that when people are looking for this type of uh, content and they go on Google and they put in these words, health, wellness, women, women of color, mental health, then guess what? This podcast will begin to come further and further up the chain on search engines when the more subscribers that we have. So by subscribing to the channel, which costs you nothing, by sharing the podcast, by commenting when you're listening to the podcast, telling others about this podcast, you help us rise in the analytics and you help us with getting this message, this message of self-care, health and wellness for women of color and our whole community out. Because when women do well, the whole community does well. And so we are very passionate about that. And we ask that you would help us with that. I also want you to know that Dr. Tony's fitness challenge is going on. My birthday fitness challenge is going on in the month of May. Um, I do a, a fitness challenge a couple of times a year. One of those months is in May for my birthday. I, um, on, on today, May 16th, turned 59 years old. And, um, and I just, I'm just so excited about, about my fitness challenge. And I just encourage you to get on board. If you've not already get on board with us for the fitness challenge, so you can be health, healthy spirit, soul, and body. I know that it will be a blessing in your life. So join up with us in this fitness challenge. While you on, uh, while you, while you on my website, let me put my website up and while you there, Go and get some of the Harmony Fitness Apparel. Don't do the fitness challenge and don't get the fitness apparel. Come on, do the challenge and be cute while you're doing it. Go there and get some of the Harmony Fitness Challenge. We have other things there. We have teas there. We have uh, Harmony um, uh, oil blends there, uh, uh, um, aromatherapy there. But to help you with some of these sustainable things that Nafisha talked about that can help you with um, with uh, self care, health, and wellness, and help refresh you and um, and uh, and bring you back to life when you're feeling like you need that type of re re energizing and uh, and uh, refueling in your life. So there, go there to Dr. Tony Alvarado. Sign up for the um, fitness challenge. 
go there. Ladies, join the Harmonize Your Life uh, Women's Self-Care Network while you're there on my website. Join the network for less than $5, for less than a Starbucks cup of coffee. You can join this network. Y'all know y'all spend more on coffee and uh, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and you spend more on your lashes, your nails, and all the kind of stuff. And what I've discovered is many of us want to look cute on the inside, on the outside, but we are jacked up on the inside. And one of the things that we work on in this network is making sure that our that our, that we look good outside and inwardly. And so we have programming in the network that will help you with that. We offer classes, yoga classes, deep breathing classes. We have uh, what we call Tea Time with Dr. Tony, where I I meet with the women once a month in a support group type meeting. And we bring in facilitators to sometimes to teach us and speak to us and lead discussions with us. We laugh together, we cry together, and we, uh, we uh, we travel together. Last but not least, we still have a few uh, spaces left for the Harmonize Your Life uh, Women's Self-Care Retreat. We're going back to Aruba, January 5th to 9th, 2023. And when you go to my website, you can get more information about that as well. Thank you so much, um, uh, Nafisha, for joining in our conversation today, for helping us with our conversation on today. I'm going to come out of the stream just a little bit and I'm going to highlight you and I want you to give us one last word of encouragement. All right. Thank you for having me. And my last gem of encouragement would be the greatest gift you can give yourself is intentional time. The greatest gift you can give yourself is intentional time. And it's it's not selfish. It's needed. And in order to be to, to be all that God has called you to be, you're going to have to reach within um, no matter what's going on on the outside. And in order to be able to reach within and stay connected to self, you're going to have to give yourself the gift of intentional time. Wow. And to give yourself the gift of intentional time. Save some for yourself. You know, they have to say, leave it all on the field. Don't leave it all on the field. No. <laughs> Leave a lot of it on the field, but save some for yourself, okay? Because you need it. You're important Mm -hmm. and you deserve it. Thank you so much. Say that again. And I was going to say, it's nobody else's responsibility but yours. But yours. Nobody else can do it for you. Nobody else is responsible for your Mm self-care. You are responsible Mm -hmm. for your self-care. We're all responsible. We can hold one another accountable. Mm -hmm. We can encourage one another. But ultimately, we have to be willing to do the work. And I thank you so much for uh, reminding us of that, Nafisha. Continue to soar, continue to grow, continue to do all the things that God is calling you to do in this work, in what I call healing work. All right. And I appreciate you for that. All right, you all, we'll see you again next week on another uh, uh, conversation on self-care for women of color with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. See you next time. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado, and I want to personally invite you to join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. Join us for fitness motivation, health and wellness information, inspiration, self-care strategies, and ideas for creating harmony in your life. As a certified health and wellness coach, it is one of my greatest honors to support women in their fitness, health, wellness, and self-care goals. Join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network, and we will do you good on your journey.